Are you thinking of reading spin selling? This quick video will help you determine if it's a total waste of time and it includes a spin selling summary and spin selling examples. Now, according to the book's author, Neil Rackham, successful salespeople ask a lot more questions during sales calls than do their less successful colleagues. I'm Peter Fermenti and I've helped thousands of coaches, consultants, digital marketers, and their salespeople close a lot more sales by reducing objections through questions and the spin selling model definitely speaks to that. Now, don't forget to subscribe so we show up on the little notification bell in the corner. Like this video if it's helpful or if you want to see more like it. And of course, comment down below with any questions that you've got or any comments that you've got about this content. Okay, so let's dive into the book Spin Selling right now. One of the key takeaways from this book is that closing is less important than most salespeople think. In fact, what the author says, and rightly so, questioning is far more important than objection handling. Now, here's the thing about objections. Most people will just give you a polite excuse to get off the phone because they do not want to tell you that they're not interested in buying and they don't want to get the hard sale. So they'll either tell you they don't have the money, they need to think about it, or they'll just pretend to be sold and give some excuse about starting next week or at some time in the future. Now, what spin selling suggests is that learning to handle these objections is less important than uncovering the true motivations of what the person wants and why they will buy. Now, if you know this going into the close, you are going to be far more successful. The author further concludes that the higher your price, the less closing techniques like buy today and get a special price or some cheap one-liner objection handlers will work. And this is because your buyers are more sophisticated. They need the solution to connect with them directly and be exactly what they're looking for. And they need for them to help them to see that your offer is what they're looking for. And in order to do that, you need to uncover exactly what they need. Neil talks about two different types of needs, explicit versus implicit needs. Now, an explicit need is a need stated by the buyer. The buyer needs to see how your solution will solve their explicit problems. An implicit need is an implied need, but not one voiced by the buyer and far less important. In fact, oftentimes, you'll find salespeople sharing all the advantages of their product or their service. And this often pushes the buyer further away because what they care about is solving their explicit needs, according to Neil. Now, if you've done any sales training, I'm sure you've heard of features versus benefits, right? Well, explicit needs are the benefits for the specific prospect you're speaking to. And these can only be ascertained through questioning, and this is why questions are so darn important. Think of implicit needs more like features. It might be great that you have them, but unless a buyer specifically indicates a feature is important to them, it is not likely going to move the needle. And this is again why questions are so important. They are not buying your service or product, they are buying the outcome it will get them. They're buying their way out of something, right? They're buying the avoidance of a consequence and what it will help them keep from happening. If you do not understand the outcome they want or the consequences they are avoiding, then you might as well be selling air. Getting commitment is another component of the sale Neil indicates is a key to success. Throughout the call, you need to get micro commitments to bring the sale home at the close. All right, now I wanna talk a little bit about the outcomes of a sales call. According to Neil, there are four outcomes from a sales call. The first is order, second is advance, third is continuation, and the fourth is no sale. Now order, is pretty straightforward, right? You get the order, you made the sale, you took payment. The second one, advance, is moving the prospect forward in some way. Now, with the clients we work with in the expert space, selling coaching, consulting, digital marketing, or other expert services, we teach a one-call close. So an advance would be taking a deposit so that they can move money around or for some other reason before they get started. With more complex sales or in corporate, an advance might be moving the sale up a level to the next level of decision makers. 
Whereas a continuation, the third one, is really just leaving the status where it's at. The prospect has not said no, but they're really not ready to advance the sale or buy yet either. And then finally, the fourth one is no sale. And this is when the prospect has said, absolutely not. They are not interested and this is not for them. Neil goes on to say that there are four main question types as well. Situation, problem, implication, and need payoff. Now, situation questions help uncover the current situation and what they're doing now. An example of this might be, what kind of sales training does your team receive currently? You use these questions to understand the prospect's current situation and the general information on what they're doing now and really how things are going. And then there's problem questions, right? With problem questions, we uncover the problem or the pain that they want to solve. An example of this one would be, how consistent is your sales team performing right now? Here, you're digging in to understand the specific problems that are showing up that matter to them. The third one, implication questions, uncover the implications of the problem, how it affects them or the organization. And according to Neil, these are the least common questions. An example here might be, what's going to happen if you cannot increase your close rate on cold traffic? Understanding the implications of the problem helps determine how valuable your service might be and what will happen if they do not invest in working with you or making this change. The fourth one is need payoff questions. Now, need payoff questions help the prospect to understand the ROI they get from the need they want solved. An example of this would be, if you could increase your close rate by 10%, what impact would that have on your bottom line? Now, these are important as they help illustrate to the client exactly what value they can get from working with you. In the book, Neil goes on to explain that objections are usually created by the salesperson, not the buyer, and the buyers buy based on the benefits to solving an explicit need, not just features or mere advantages of your product or services over others. You must develop needs before you offer benefits, and that's why he suggests these different questioning formats. Now, Neil believes that for lower prices or less sophisticated buyers, just having them like you can be enough. But as buyers become more sophisticated or as your prices go up or your services go up in price, you must adjust your process to really understand the prospect. And he also says that with sophisticated buyers, you must get down to business quickly. You want to build rapport very quickly and you don't want to waste time talking about the weather. Time is money to sophisticated buyers. And Neil goes on to explain that implementing these techniques should be done slowly, just one principle at a time. All right, if you are thinking of reading Spin Selling, let me know if this summary helped you to make a decision to read it by leaving a comment below the video. And as always, subscribe with the notification bell to get more new content that's coming. Share this video with someone who needs it and like this video if you found it helpful. And finally, if you want access to a free training, you can grab it in the description link below this video.